Uh, welcome back, everybody, to an Aircore uh, interview where today we have an uh, All Writers, a documentary uh, short film directed by Victor, who is down below, and uh, guest speaker Robert, who was also in the film. Um, so today it'll be a different, a little different for myself and probably the viewers, as I haven't had a documentary uh created f uh guest on here so my questions i do apologize if it's either repeated from others that you may have answered or uh if it seems more asking about the film itself since um i, I tried my best figuring out questions that both relate to the topic at hand in the film and the actual just making of it um but um thank you guys for both being here and uh, i really do appreciate uh we love uh anyone that would uh come share and talk about their their film on here and their thoughts on the topics at hand and uh yeah how are you guys today i'm good thank you so much for having me lewis it's a great opportunity to be here with you and to talk about all writers and uh it's an even bigger pleasure to be here with robert as you uh quite rightly mentioned is one of our protagonists in the film mm -hmm. and uh i'm proud to call a, a dear friend <laughs> we love to hear that yeah, I mean, so uh, normally I allow the the directors or guests that come on here to talk uh, about their film, like the synopsis. Uh, would you like to do that, either one of you? Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> I, I can get started. And Robert, if you'd like, you can uh, chime in. Um, so All Writers is a documentary short uh, mm -hmm. about the battle for accessibility in the New York City subway system told by those fighting it. So the likes of Robert Acevedo, who is a board member for a activist group called Disabled in Action, which is in fact mm -hmm. the longest still running cross disability group uh, in the United States, uh, which is quite outstanding. Um, and the story for all writers is basically about uh, how the lack of accessibility in the subway has wide ranging effects not only for the disabled, but also for all riders, right? That's it's called all riders mm -hmm. because accessibility is about universality, right? You know, yes. the movie, the catalyst of the movie actually was the death of Malaysia Goodson, who was a 22 year old mother who was carrying her one year old daughter Riley in her stroller down subway stairs in Midtown Manhattan, and she unfortunately fell down the stairs and and passed away. Um, and that news, that happened in late January of 2019. And like many New Yorkers, I lived in the city at the time. And when I saw that news, I was completely shocked and horrified that such an event could happen. Like we all know mm -hmm. that the system is very old and the infrastructure is ancient, but that really hit home. And then I started doing a lot of research, uh, reading a lot of papers on accessibility, trying to learn about the issue. And then quickly that transitioned into field work meeting mm -hmm. activists like Robert, hearing their stories and, you know, really just delving into the community to really, you know, listen first and foremost, and yeah. in turn, you know, figure out the best ways to amplify uh, their messages and, and their personal stories. We love, we love to hear that. Uh, would you like did to- I, Did I miss anything, bit? Robert? Yeah. No, that that's pretty, pretty <laughs> good there. Um, I, I just wanted to let um, uh, people know that um, we're going to be having, a, uh, we're going to be meeting at 9 a.m. on December 15th um, at the MTA headquarters on 2 Broadway, um, basically uh, talking about this, this issue and that, you know, our elevators are a human right. Yeah, and that uh, the MTA should uh, uh, put this down in a legal binding agreement about having elevators mm -hmm. and uh, things like that. So uh, we're going to be, like I said, we're going to be meeting up um, at uh, at nine um, on December fifth, uh, December fifteenth. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll have the episode out uh, by tonight then just to get the word out uh, yeah. to everyone that listens to our shows. 
Um, yeah, I mean, uh, for your synopsis and how you were introducing it, um, I guess you kind of answered the the first question that I wanted to ask, but um, I'll, I'll nonetheless see if you can elaborate more. Um, so I know many directors, they come in all ways and shapes and sizes and whatnot, and they all have their, their own respective ideas on why they create films, right? They all have their own reasons. Some can be because they have personal reasons, some um, personal experiences and just items as in, uh, uh, just, uh, a personal connection to the, to the message in the film or there's a story or some can just have, uh, the film made because they were able to do it or because they had the creative will. Right. So would you say that, uh, finding out about, um, th what the, the New York subway system, uh, his problem was having in the tragic death uh, that happened. Um, was that your reason to start all this or was there a bit more to get involved into the story? That's a really good question, Lewis, and I'm glad you asked it because it's a question that I actually ask myself, um, you know, mm -hmm. looking back, you know, they say hindsight is 2020 and I look at the back end of, you know, this journey really has been a, it's a two, two year long journey and I, the catalyst was in fact the passing of Malaysia Goodson, but I think the, the, the elements that really, you know, the magnetism, if you want to call it, of the issue was the, just the universality of it that was just so compelling you know, that you, you, you look at the cities, like you take a city like New York, right? Mm -hmm. That is, you know, the urban designs of almost a hundred years ago, plus, and the physical environment, you know, this ability, you know, is a very, you know, uh, personal issue, right? You can take three people with the same disability, for example, and they all have their own experiences. And fundamentally also I found was interesting is disability is something that can happen to anyone at, you know, later in life, you know, um, yeah. like one of our characters, Sasha, he had an accident and he became disabled. Um, and, uh, that, that was an aspect that was really compelling, not just the, 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 the navigating this in an environment that wasn't built for you per se, mm -hmm. because in the history of the disability of disability history, there is what they call the, the medical model and the social model. The medical model implies that like, there's something wrong with you, Robert, cause you're disabled and something's wrong with you and but now the social model is is a little bit more evolved and more holistic which mm -hmm. is there's something wrong with you you're just a person that happens to be disabled because of x y and z so mm -hmm. society is is the the impediment the obstacles the physical uh, uh barriers and i thought that historical heritage was really interesting uh to weave in because the 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 subway in new york like in any big metropolis is the lifeblood of the city i mean the city grew with the subway at the turn of the century, you know, and, and neighborhoods like Queen in Queens or in the Bronx, you know, did not exist before mm -hmm. the subway went to those neighborhoods. So, you know, everyone who lives in the city of New York or visits, you know, uh, like I've helped so many parents with strollers, Lewis, up and down the stairs. Um, yeah. And you don't think about it because you're like, you know, it's just you're just helping a fellow person, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you learn that like unemployment rates are astronom astronomically higher in the disabled community just because not because they're not qualified or educated, because they, they can't access opportunity, right? You yeah. know, you want to go have a drink after work with your friends, you're going to grab the subway. What does that mean when the station near your house doesn't have an elevator or a ramp or when you get to your destination? the elevator is broken. Like there's all these factors that as able-bodied people, you don't think about, right? But then yeah. it, it's such a fundamental element that is just crucial to the life of, of people with disabilities and that has real impacts in their, their prospects, their quality of life, their employment opportunities, their educational opportunities. But then if you bring it back, you know, Malaysia Goodson was an able-bodied mother. And she would have benefited from an elevator, just like Robert mm -hmm. needs elevators to get around. It's not like a if, buts, or maybes. Yeah. It's like this guy needs an elevator because it's his right and freedom as an mm -hmm. individual to move around, right? The freedom of movement is a fundamental right that is um, not there, or at least it's not there in the fullest way that other people have, right? And it's a question about equity about civil rights, about, you know, a community that is the largest minority in the city of New York, numbering almost 1 million who are tenacious in their activism and who have been fighting for decades. Let's not forget, 
the Americans with Disabilities Act was passed 31 years ago, right? So mm -hmm. it's not that recent, um, but it's also so much progress has to be made. Only a quarter of stations are accessible. And of that 25 odd percent, so many elevators are out a day. And Robert can tell about his own personal stories of, you know, mm -hmm. even in the film, we were going to go to a station that was like renovated, rehabilitated, which is a fancy yeah. word for just making. Yeah. And we wanted, we were at Herald Square, right? Robert, you remember, you want to talk about it? And we, I mean, I'll just let him talk about it because it was just such yeah, a yeah. moment. Of course. Well, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I always remember. Um, this was in uh, 2019. It was. Uh, mm -hmm. Before COVID, before COVID. Yes, this was yes. all before COVID. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> I remember going with you to uh, 34th Street and uh, Herald Square. We had to walk. We had to go from your house because, but yeah. context, right. the station closest to his house yeah. mm -hmm. is not accessible. Right. So we had to go yeah. all the way up to 34th. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's so, problem number one. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, so it's funny. We, we, they, 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 they did have an elevator to get downstairs in to the station. But then um, we had to, to, to get to the platform. Um, there need to be an elevator that took us down to the platform. And of course it wasn't uh, working. And what was funny is that um, they had, uh, well, of course, when, whenever an elevator is not working, um, it has like a little, uh, uh, what is that? Like a fence or- Like a little gate, right? A little oh, black gate. Area, gate. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> um, I don't know, I just thought about this, but um, I, I, I put my hands ar around the gate and said um, that I'm in jail. Yeah. You know, ju just, yeah, a little, little funny there, you know. <laughs> yeah. but, um, you know, it, it, it was really ironic that, um, that, 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 that the elevator was not working. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah. So um, that, that, was, that was a good thing. Yeah, that happened. But I just want to... Um, give you one of my uh recent ex uh uh things that happened to me um okay. i went uh, to this um it's a station that doesn't have any elevators it's in brooklyn i live in manhattan but i mm -hmm. went to this, this station it's called uh broadway junction so, no it's, it's a very big station mm -hmm. to have um there was, I remember uh, in the action, it was with uh, Senator Schumer. And basically he was there to t tell everyone that this station is going to get an elevator. Mm -hmm. you know? And I, I, I found it, you know, very interesting, you know, when he said that. And I, I remember uh, saying, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. You know, That's right. uh, there are other stations like uh, like um, uh, the one in the Bronx, uh, Parkchester. Parkchester, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They had said as part of the capital uh, agreement or the capital, you know, the MTA was saying a while back, and that this is why we need legal binding agreement because they had mm -hmm. said they had said, oh, Parkchester is going to get an elevator. Another big station, you know, get an elevator. It, it still has to happen. It still has mm -hmm. to happen. Um, of course, you could say, you know, uh, COVID, okay, uh, it changed things and all that, but, you know, it, it just has to happen. Um, yeah. so, so, so in the future, the, the MTA could say many things right now. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. But without a legal binding agreement, well, you know, they could. They can they, push it off and give it reasons. You know? mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. And so so even with this, this station that I went in Brooklyn, uh, Broadway Junction, I hope it gets an elevator. But um, you know how I got there. I ended up having to go uh, to uh, uh, this another station that, that has an elevator. Mm -hmm. It was working at the time. Um, Utica, Utica station. And then after Utica station, I had to take a bus 
to where we were at, to that Broadway junction. So, uh, you know, it was, it, and that that's just. It's the a real- hassle, you know, it, it's a hassle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so recently that, that happened, you know. But um, that's crazy to hear. Well, well, because of my, my, I'm in the wheelchair and mm-hmm. I can't, you know, get to these places. So that, that's just a recent example. Mm. I mean, for, for before seeing this film and actually getting a grasp of what's going on outside of one's own uh, daily lives, right? Uh, and because I'm in Houston, uh, I'm not completely aware of what's happening outside, right? Or even in my own city, I'm not completely aware of what's happening uh, in in the, the community with uh, uh, just uh, the, um, what is it? Um, the subways that we have, the metro systems that we have, or just the disability and the uh, the buildings that don't have, because I believe we had had a couple claims um, and uh, protests for very important buildings that don't have ex- uh, yeah, accessibility. That's the word I was looking for um, t- for for everyone, right? Um, so uh, before seeing this film and and after it, it really gave me a grasp of like, wow. Uh, Victor mentioned is like being able body. You kind of don't grow to notice these things, right? Or to notice the importance of having that accessibility. Um, and even our, our editor and founder for this, uh, for the NARCORE, uh, he is uh, uh, disabled. He is visually impaired. And we talk every now and then when we're together in person and we're walking around. There aren't many elevators that were working on our campus and we had to take stairs. And, and because he cannot see, I think he can't see three feet past him. Uh, without needing his cane and his uh, actual glasses, it, it's very difficult and frightening for him to to go down stairs. And what you were saying with uh, uh, Malaysia's death, it, it, she was able body, and yet she still died because of having to deal with the hassle of, of bringing up the stroller and just being careful not to to cause harm to her own child. Um, so it really brings more awareness and just the, the want to to help bring more awareness to these situations and, and just try to help as best as you can. Right. Um, but for the film's overall representative, I know you guys uh, went through all that trouble to go through station to station, going through the ones that you mentioned and like showing the quote unquote rehabilitations that they did. Um and and as you mentioned, that was already tiring in itself just because you had to go from one station to get to another. Um, how was it difficulty wise just to get people to talk? Uh, and by people, I mean um, the actual representatives, because we, we know uh, sometimes it's difficult uh, for whatever reason uh, to get a hold of them and to actually hold a conversation uh, dealing with the matter. Right. Um, how was it for you, Victor, and uh, getting through that? Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, the the before we shot like a second of a film, you know, it was like eight months of research, right? Of relationship mm-hmm. building. Because, you know, I came into this as an outsider, right? You know, yeah. I sort of just kind of like, you know, hi, you know, I'm you know, you had to gain the it and also gain the trust, right? And of, of Robert yeah. and of other, you know, veteran activists who have, you know, I had to show them that I sort of was genuine and had a keen interest in helping and that I really understood what I was talking about, that I had done my due diligence, right? So that was a a, a, a very fulfilling process because I said at the start, and I mean this, you know, Robert's a dear friend, you know, I keep close contact with Malaysia's mother and her family, and that's like mm-hmm. the priceless aspects of, of this whole process, right? But in terms of getting the, uh, like, um, you know, assembly members in the film or even like uh, politicians in, in the film. It was really like, you know, one of our characters, Danny Poro, who is in part of the uh, Bronx Community Board uh, 9, which is the largest community board in the borough of the Bronx. And and he's in DIA. I met him through DIA, through Robert's organization or the yeah. organization Robert is part of yeah. as board yeah. member. And, you know, um, Danny is an outstanding man, you know, guy. We really hit it off. And he's like, hey, come over to, you know, to a meeting, to a community board meeting. Parchester, the station that's that we feature, that's a big station on, on the six um, in the Bronx, is in his in, in his district, let's just say. So the district manager, Will Rivera, 
he's like, hey, you should totally, you know, he connected me with someone else. And then, you know, Harvey Epstein, the assembly member is also, you know, a known person of, you know, you know, I would meet people in the community and he's like, hey, you should totally talk to this guy. And, yeah. you know, because, you know, Harvey Epstein, for example, he's an assembly member in the Lower East Side. And so he was very strong in getting like First Avenue on the L train accessible, which he recently mm -hmm. succeeded. And, you know, he was very involved in like the L train shutdown and all the ramifications of that. But to get like the actual MTA on tape was a challenge. Yeah. It was really difficult because one of the big reasons why I really wanted to make the film as well, Lewis, is that from an outsider's perspective, right? Just like a, a strap hanger who just took the train, you know, to school, to work, to whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the system's kind of, you know, screwed up and it's lacking in, in a lot of, uh, you know, of uh, aspects. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, Andrew Cuomo, the recent governor, um, he appointed, uh, because at the end of the day, the MTA is a state agency, right? The governor yeah. runs it, you know, which is a whole other, a whole other can of worms. But he appointed a man called Andy Byford, who is okay. a seasoned transit professional. He, you know, turned the Toronto subway around and he has a real track record. He's like, I'm going to come here and fix this. And he released a, you know, a fast forward plan, which was like, this is the plan that is going to get New York into the 21st century, you know, mm -hmm. for good. And one of the pillars was accessibility. So I'm like, damn, like the winds of change seem to be blowing. There's this guy at the helm. He's saying the right things. He's clearly competent. He's got a team around him, including a guy called Alex Elagudin, who is a superstar in the community. He, you know, uh, became disabled in like 2003 when he was in college. And so he was able-bodied and became disabled. And he, you know, founded a uh, ac uh, advocacy group called Wheeling Forward and a group mm -hmm. called the Access Project, which Robert, uh, you know, we went there in, in, it's in Crown Heights in Brooklyn. So okay. the community knows him. And he, not yeah. only that, he has a foot in the in, in the public sector as well because he was in the um, Taxi and Limousine Commission under Mira Joshi, who is now in the Biden administration. And he was really important in getting accessible cabs in, in, in yeah. the fleet in New York. So I'm like, holy, well, wait a second. Like we have all of these factors, right? The death of Malaysia Goodson, the government seemingly sort of like at last doing, you know, its due yeah. diligence. I'm like, I knew that I, I needed to get to Alex. And it was very difficult because I felt for a while that I was sort of a persona non grata with the mm -hmm. MTA. I tried with like his, his, a person in his office through like, you know, through her and it didn't work. Back channel through a contact that he knew, the TLC, the Taxi and Limousine Commission, that didn't work. And I was getting frustrated because I knew that the film was going to be very heavy on the activism front and a lot of MTA bashing. Because okay. everyone loves to bash on, on, on poor government and on the MTA specifically. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I needed his perspective as a disabled man in a position of power, seemingly in, in a position of, of influence, right? You know, uh, as the first head of system-wide accessibility, like this is unheard of. His position was created and he was like the perfect man for the job. So one day I was really frustrated and I just found like the MTA like number, like the directory. And I just got someone on the phone. You know, those moments when you just want to talk to a human and you're like, hi, get me the press office. And then I talked to a guy and I'm like, I'm a filmmaker. I'm going to talk to Alex. And he's like, oh, okay. And then, you know, email back and forth, back and forth. And he was actually the last interview of the film before we like wrapped shooting. He was, it yeah. was a Monday and we finished on like a Friday. And it was tough because, you know, he in the community is also kind of a, a divisive individual. And I can let uh, Robert talk more about him, but mm -hmm. you know, it was at the end, at the end of the day, I'll just say this, it was really important to get his perspective because I really wanted to sort of present a full picture of the activists, the people on the ground fighting for change, the people unexpectedly thrusted into this world, like the family members of Malaysia Goodson, who through tragedy became involved in this, but also give voice to, you know, the MTA, because as much as the MTA is criticized, they did come out with like the largest capital program ever, like $51 billion, $7 billion for accessibility. Like Alec, like Robert said, promises, promises, promises. But like they're saying like, hey, like, you know, we get federal funding. We'll get this. We'll get that. We'll do it. Like we're, yeah. we're ready. So it's like everything was sort of like perfect. And I was like sort of just there at the right time. And I just felt like, you know, this is a, a, a story in the making that is a very New York story, right? Because it's about the subway. It's about New Yorkers. But, you know, you'd use the, the Houston example, right? Um, you know, accessibility in transit is is a is an issue across all of the United States, across all of the world, right? Mm -hmm. 
but fundamentally, what really sort of the, I don't want to call the cherry on top of the cake because it's a horrible fact, the New York City subway is the least accessible in the United States. It's wow. the largest, but it's the least accessible. It's, it's complete bonkers, right? So all yeah. these factors were sort of just like, and Robert and these, you know, really like Robert and all these activists were sort of like the message of like the divine message, if you want to call it, the sort of like universe telling me you got to tell these stories because they're, they're amazing. Robert is an outstanding activist. He talked about, you know, next Wednesday, he's going to be there at the MTA. They're there all the time at the board meeting. Every If it's not Robert, it's not Sasha, it's someone else. There's always mm -hmm. someone there from the sister organizations talking about accessibility, rain or shine, you know, they, there's like five lawsuits going on right now, Lewis. It's like crazy. Like the, the yeah. we talk about a legal binding agreement. It's like, it shouldn't come to this. The MTA shouldn't drag its feet. They should just do what's morally right, but also what's yeah. like financially not ruinous, right? If you make, think about it like a COVID recovery, right? If you're mm -hmm. a business owner, why would you bring your business to New York that has terrible infrastructure that's barely accessible when you could go to Boston? that has a fully accessible system that's older mm -hmm. than New York. So there's a lot of issues here on a human level, but also on a governor, government level, all these things sort of intertwined that, you know, I was fortunate enough to sort of, you know, be allowed by folks like Robert and, and Sasha and the Goodsons to sort of, you know, be the, the, the messenger. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, yeah, it definitely. I, I feel I feel on that where it's uh, it goes deeper than we, we would hope, and then so also and how so the the government uh, they like you said they dried their feet, just giving you promises to appease the people, and then do nothing of it, right? Um, but last question before I I take more of your time, um, uh, or at least Please. the last official question. Um, so. We know you did this in, in the last two years with 2019 actually shooting and then editing. And now I believe it's in its festival circuits. Um, do you plan or have a vision to come back in the next couple of years to just see how everything is and give an update on it with another film on it? Um, or do you think you just leave it here and just hope that uh with the awareness spread and and then hopefully getting more people to to understand the situation and to get more people to to come out and help uh just pers just persuade and push uh the people in charge for change um do you think you'd come back in the next couple of years to kind of showcase the 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 updates you know um i think i i i I want to um, because there's so many stories that we mm -hmm. couldn't tell. You know, we 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 came to to a decision, a hard decision, but a necessary one to let's make the film a short, right? Okay. Because we had enough material to make like a you know a feature if we wanted to, right? But we mm -hmm. we sort of kind of you know realize you know what because accessibility, you know, you could talk about accessibility in housing, education, workplace. Yeah. Every you name me, name me an issue. Accessibility is, is a factor. We were like, no, let's focus on transit, right? Let's talk about transit. You know, we couldn't talk about the history of of the movement, right? Like the disability movement in New York. I didn't know this, but it started in the post-war era. Veterans from World War II came back, many of them disabled, and they were sort of the first ones to, you know, start pushing for like, hey man, you know, uh, give me like, you know, a, a parking spot, right? Like, hey, you know, Mayor Lindsay, uh, you know, give me a disabled spot, things like that, right? Small things like that. And then it started building. And then in 1979, there was like a big lawsuit with the Eastern Paralyzed Veterans Association, who then became United Spinal. One of the guys that we feature in the film, he not only was like one of the architects of this lawsuit, which was like the first lawsuit that was like sort of started this whole process, but he also worked on the ADA. So we didn't really get to talk about not only that historical aspect, but, you know, we only really talked about wheelchair access, which is yeah. one sliver of, of accessibility. It's a fundamental aspect. It's the most visible one, really. You know, the, the disability accessibility symbol is a person on the wheelchair. And a lot of people sort of default to, you know, wheelchairs. And the reason why we, we leaned on that a lot in, in the elevators is because not just Malaysia Goodson needed an elevator, but because our characters really dictated the story. You know, Sasha's a wheelchair user. Robert has a wheelchair. You know, it was sort of like the, the common denominator that was the allowed us to, to really just sort of drive the narrative. But like you mentioned, your colleague who is visually impaired, mm -hmm. we barely touch visually impaired uh, folks in the film. So, and that's a huge 
process, right? Visually impaired, people with cognitive disabilities, people with, there's so many disabilities and they all interact with the transit system, hearing impaired as well, announcements. And so it, it's, I definitely think I, I ought to come back and to give voice to those aspects because there's so many people, Lewis, amazing folks yeah. that I've met that are just tenacious activists, like elbow grease, just like fighting through the thick, fighting the system. And I want to give voice to them, but also like, you know, the MTA is saying like now the Biden administration just passed a 1.5 trillion, a controversial, but necessary, I would say like, you know, 1.5 trillion dollar infrastructure package. And now, you know, it's like, Hey, green light. All right. Let's see the elevators, you know, out on the, yeah. the streamline. Right. Right. Robert. Like he's, he's yeah. smirking already. It's like, let's <laughs> now we really need a binding agreement. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, you know, I got to come back because it's like, yeah, now it's awesome. now you, you don't have any excuses, right? You got the money. Although we know that the MTA is notorious for just squandering, you know, money. That's a story mm -hmm. for another time. But I think I ought to come back because it's like, we got to keep the free to the fire, whether it's a mm -hmm. legal binding agreement or whether it's another doc, like a part two of yeah. like, hey, like we're back. What's going on? Because there's so many we just touched the tip of the iceberg. And I, I think, you of know, course. you mentioned we're in festivals, you know, we're, we're trying to get into the Oscar shortlist uh, for mm -hmm. the Academy Awards and, you know, which is, you know, just more, you know, fuel and, and it just motivates us to spread the word, right? We knew that yeah. in a short, we're, we wouldn't be able to sort of change people's, you know, as a filmmaker, I'm not out here to like fundamentally change your worldview. I want to hopefully hold up a mirror and touch your heart and make you look at the real tangible ramifications of issues that you may not be aware of, like accessibility or the broken immigration system or whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, and, and, and for accessibility, it, it's an ongoing story, right? So if I come back and make a film on it in five years, you bet it's going to be like, all right, you know, there's more issues because like the New York city subway just celebrated its 117th birthday this October, late October. So it's like, okay. bro, you're like dealing with this infrastructure that's like so old. And it's like government yeah. that doesn't act. And at the end of the day, you have like these real people who just need the freaking subway to just get around. So I, I think I got to come back. I got so many relationships Definitely. in the community that are just so rich and just like, I don't know, man. Like, I just love putting people on film and just amplifying their voices. And like having the friendship of Robert, for example, is just, Robert, you want me to come back, right? Like, we got to do more, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and that's why... It was so, it was so good to have that experience, uh, having this this film at the uh, recent, at the documentary film festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Doc NYC, the, the largest the, doc yeah. film festival in the U.S., wow. and we were there. Wow, that's a huge and, win. What? Awesome, it's a huge win, and, and we won more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Straight definitely. Forward. Yeah. No, yeah. de definitely. I, I, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's. Of course, like you mentioned, uh, when you make something and you try to to be over persuasive, right? It, it, it kind of goes people's over there. It's like they, they kind of, they smack their lips and go, ah, this right. guy, and then keep going with their lives. Uh, but it's, it's definitely how the way you, you just framed everything and how you gathered your information and took your time with it. It definitely, I, I, for me at least, it, it touched my heart and it definitely, uh, brought more awareness than, um, what I already thought I had into situations outside of just my world. Right. Um, and I hope to see more of the, of your work in, in the future. And, and I do, hope that you are able to spread more awareness by your festival circus and getting into the oscars and uh, academy awards because uh, i i would hope that with uh, such a film and its message and its story and and the 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 item behind it uh, goes through people's heads right um but i mean before I, I take any more of your time i the last things is just uh basic uh so like you said they're still going on through festival festival circuits um but would you have uh, any place where the public can see this film or uh would they be able to contact someone to get access to the to the screener um, absolutely um so the first thing i would say is follow our instagram at mm -hmm. all writers doc uh a double -L, l writers doc uh for the latest up-to-date uh latest and greatest news related to the film and you know uh if you dm that uh page you know you'll hear from me um, you could also email me at vdrsvictor at gmail.com. That's the best way to reach me. Um, 
and but definitely follow the Instagram. That's where all the information is at. Um, in terms of accessing the film, once we're done with our with our festival campaign, and once once the Oscars mm -hmm. kind of sort of when all that jazz kind of just sort of ends, um, yeah. it'll be you know it'll be up on Vimeo. You can just look up all writers. You know the battle for accessibility. Uh, it'll be up there. It was up there initially before we went into this whole festival run. Um, okay. You know, got a Vimeo staff pick. It got like twenty thousand views, and it was like that initial sort of like whoa, like this is resonating, right? Yeah. So it'll be up there. It was on YouTube before. Also, oh, wow. yeah, we started on YouTube. We released it like, dude, yeah. I made this to honor the, a girl who died that like shot. Yeah. I didn't make this for the awards or anything. Or yeah, it course. was just like a, and to be, um, you know, talking to you or even like all of this madness is just, mm -hmm. a, a, you know, it's a good sign. But yeah, the Instagram, my email, and also like the uh, on Vimeo, all writers, um, you know, the battle for accessibility. I think that's the title. It'll be up, you know, back publicly uh, in like the next couple months, as soon as the the campaigns um, uh, wrap up. Okay, cool. Uh, do you guys have any anything else, Robert, Victor? Uh, I'll let Robert. I think I've said too much, yeah. Robert. I you you can any closing <laughs> well, my friend. I, you know, I, I just want to say that um, it, it was a great experience for me. Mm -hmm. It was the first time me. It, it, in a film, and Victor made made me feel very comfortable, uh, awesome. you know, uh, things like that. So um, it was just a great experience, and um, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. I, you know, yeah. I it. Let's get the paperwork, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I think I'll still be in the wheelchair, and I'll be, I'll be there again. Awesome. I mean, yeah, I'd love to see more of you guys in, in just uh, news and in, in just uh, articles and stuff like that, and as well as hearing from uh, yourself. Uh, because this uh, network does do film work, I hope to see you guys' name on the list for the Oscar contenders for documentaries and shorts and all that. Any um, Academy voters and, listening to this, give us give yeah. us some love. <laughs> there you go. Um, but thank you again so much for coming on and talking. Uh, I really do Thank appreciate you, you guys it's... just spreading that message and coming on to talk to someone like us and, and giving your time uh, it's, because it's been a pleasure. Uh, everyone has their no, lives, right? Um, thank you, um, man. And, you know, it's great to be here with Robert, you know, and, and again, thank you for, for spreading the message with your platform. It, it's, it really means a lot. You know, it's, uh, it's great. Uh, yeah. It's, of course. Terrific. We're here. We're always here if you want to continue talking. So you can just hit myself up or our email with uh, uh, Mariana, I believe, has it. So if you need anything else from us that you think we can Brilliant. be able to help, definitely hit us up. Um, but thank you guys, uh, everyone, for watching and listening um, to this interview. It's been a great honor and just a pleasure being here. Um, I think it might have been one of my favorite episodes of the of interviews. We've only done a handful of them, but so far you guys have been amazing guests to have on. Um, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And to everyone listening, go check out our writers and just follow their Instagram. Check out their, uh, their pages. Uh, check for updates and just share and bring awareness to the situation because it is an important topic that needs to be discussed more um so i'll catch you guys in the next episode of nerdcore peace so what does it mean to get around when you, when you can't walk able-bodied people never think that it's gonna happen to them jail this is jail this is jail jail New York City Transit is the least accessible subway system in the entire United States. Only about a quarter of stations are accessible to people with disabilities. It's time to recognize our civil rights, everyone's civil rights, to ride the friggin' subway. Malaysia Goodson fell down the stairs and died with her stroller. Malaysia was an excellent mother. Just imagining as she was going down, what was going through her mind. Her birthday is coming up. <laughs> what do we want? No and when do we want them? No. No.